the current algorithm is designed so that proposers with the leader among them, acceptors and learners are separate concurrent processes. If we can have each process playing the role of proposer, acceptor, and a learner, then we can remove redundancy between these sequences, VL, VA, and VD. So, so far, we have a single optimization, which is the algorithm is optimized for the case when a single proposer runs for a longer period of time, and that proposal is a leader. Now we are going to add new assumptions. The assumption that we are going to add is each process will act in all roles as proposer, acceptor, and learner. And this is what we call a replicated state machine. So in the replicated state machine, each replica will play the role of a proposer, acceptor, and learner. And of course, it, they will elect one among themselves as a leader. So now what do we have? So the proposer have access to its own accepted sequence and its own decided sequence. That is a proposer, which is the leader in this case. And the acceptor know what is decided, that is VD. What we want to achieve is that at each replica, the decided sequence VD is a prefix of the accepted sequence VA. In addition, at the leader's replica, the accepted sequence VA is a prefix of the proposed sequence. Now we'd like to remove VL, the sequence at the proposer. We have now a situation where P is the leader and it has access to its own accepted sequence. So when P becomes a leader, it is possible to remove the need to store these two sequences the sequence at the leader and the accepted sequence separately. And by updating the local replica directly, instead of sending a prepare message to itself, it is possible to merge the proposed sequence and the accepted sequence. Why this is correct? At this stage, or at this state, when P gets the leader event, so it means that L is a leader, we know that N is greater than the promise at this process. Hence, we are going to get a promise anyway. But these values are already available at the leader. So the message promise is unnecessary. So from now on, the leader is extending its own accepted value. So let's look now to the algorithm, what we have done, what changes we have done. Again, we just look here. We see that this is the code for the leader. So it's new NL is N and the promise is N now. So we updated the promise in his accepted role. He immediately adds the pair where the last round where he accepted the value and the sequence accepted. And then he sends to all acceptors except himself because we have already added this value. So that is fine. The rest is as usual when we get a promise. We add the promise to the set. If we get a majority, we select the max pair in that set and assign this to A, and K is the highest number. And then we immediately augment VA. We don't have VL anymore with the set of proposed command that has been accumulated during the prepare phase. And then we send to all acceptors the new sequence. The rest is again the same. So now we are using VA instead of VL. So if the leader is in the accept phase, he just accumulates, get a propose, append it to the accepted sequence, and send an accept command. So this is the algorithm. 
Now we look at removing the redundancy between the accepted sequence and the decided sequence. So here is our assumptions so far. The algorithm is optimized for a single leader, proposer. Number two, each process acts in all roles as acceptor, learner, and proposer. And that is what we call the replicated state machine assumption. And now we add one more assumption. And this assumption is using a perfect FIFO link. In a perfect FIFO link, messages from a source to a destination arrive in the same send order. So we assume a perfect FIFO link. It's called FIFO perfect link. And this will be important for accepting commands incrementally. There should be no performance penalty because out of order commands has to be buffered anyway before decision. So the issue here is, can we buffer in the link abstraction or should we buffer in the consensus abstraction? Here we take the decision to buffer in the link abstraction. It is a better choice given that buffering is already done at the lower network stack. It is also a more natural fit when dealing with sequences. Now, the assumptions itself is not too strong in practice. In the field silent model, you model a FIFO perfect link from a perfect link by adding sequence numbers. Existing systems, like for example, Zookeeper, which is a consensus log anyway, it makes this assumption. Now, if we implement a perfect link on the top of TCP, then FIFO order of delivery from a source to a destination is more or less already provided during a session. Here comes to the point, what happens if a session is broken? In some sense, this assumption does not mimic a real system. Yes, during a session, messages from sources to a destination are delivered in FIFO order by the TCP as long as the session is not broken. That is what we are going to assume now. However, we will also treat later a session-based FIFO perfect link, which is actually only provides FIFO during a session. And if the session is broken, some messages could be dropped. So now we are looking how to remove VD. So every replica stores the accepted sequence and the decided sequence, even though they are redundant. But because of the FIFO link, and also at the same round, it means we are talking in a round where is one proposer, which is a leader, accept messages are delivered before corresponding decide messages to any replica. So you can see here, if a leader send an accept message to a replica, because of five order of the channel, this accept message will be delivered here before the decide message is delivered. These messages are sent in the same order from the leader, so it will be delivered at the destination, which is the acceptor and learner at the same order. Given that, so we have the following invariant. It always holds that for any replica Q, the decided sequence at Q is a prefix of the accepted sequence at Q. Because you get the accepted sequence first, you send accepted or accept acknowledged to the leader, and then you get later the decided sequence. The sequence now, the decided sequence can now be replaced by just an integer, LD. Okay, such that the decided sequence itself is the prefix of the accepted sequence at LD. Then the algorithm works as follows. Everything is the same. And now when we send a decide with, again, the prefix of the accepted sequence at M, you remember, that is what we call the supported or chosen sequence, chosen to all learners. When this sequence arrives here, we look to the LD, which an index on the accepted sequence of what is decided so far. This is initially zero. 
Now, if LD is smaller than the length of the decided sequence, and we are running in the same round by the same leader, then we update the length of the decided sequence. And then we trigger to the higher level a decide command where we say that we have decided VA up to the length of the decided sequence here. So, so this is a prefix of VA at LD. Again, I want to stress that this condition that the promise is equal to N is necessary because to guarantee that the decided sequence is a prefix of the accepted sequence, VA has to be first accepted from the same leader at the same round. Now we just look to the state of our system now. So you can see we have now only one sequence, it's called VA, it would be used for proposal and accepted, and we have now just an integer describing what is the prefix of that sequence that is decided, and uh, that is now the state of our sequence Paxos. The next step is to avoid sending sequences here and there.